Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing the top five things that you need to be doing to win more games as Holy Priest. Uh, I'm going to go through each one and if they need an example I'm going to be sharing an example as well. So I'm going to dive straight in with it and make sure you stay around for the last tip as that is arguably the most important but all of these tips are really important if you want to push as a Holy Priest in PvP. So number one, it's really important that you use Spirit of Redemption and Divine Hymn as early as you can in your games. And you wanna be playing uh, Gales of Song and Seraphic Crescendo as well to make sure Divine Hymn is a strong enough cooldown to heal the offensive cooldowns. So you walk into a game and you need to wait until that they press their major offensive cooldown. So I'm talking about Incarnation from Boomy, Unholy Frenzy from Unholy Death Knight, uh, all sorts, Metamorphosis from DH. Whenever they press these cooldowns, you need to go into Spirit and Divine Him. And you need to, you want to press this early because it's a two minute cooldown and sometimes you can get two or even three Spirits of Redemptions off in one game. So it's really important that you utilize this. Um, very, very important. And it's important to note as well that once you're in Spirit of Redemption, all your spells are mana free as well. So if you have no mana and you might get to your third redemption, you're completely tapped, but your Spirit Hymn's coming up, uh, you will go into Spirit Hymn and you'll be able to top everyone one last time. So it really can be a saving grace in some situations. And I'll show an example here. Okay, number two is really mastering Shadow Word Death and Fade to avoid CC. So most of you probably already know, but Shadow Word Death, uh, you can pre-use this on, if someone's casting a Polymorph, you could pre-use Shadow Word Death and you'll get Polymorphed and then the damage taken from Shadow Word Death will break the crowd control. And you could do this for all sorts. You can use it on Repentance, Blinding Light, Polymorph, Warlock Fear, Priest Fear, honestly, most crowd control you can death apart from like cyclone and stuff like that and stuns so it's really important that you kind of learn what you can death and use this as much as possible and also you can even combo the two say if like a priest is running in you can run in you could fade say if he has fear as well and you you don't want to get feared but you want to fear him you could fade and then what after fade you could death and then maybe he'll fear after fade and then you'll death the fear and then you can fear them so there's loads of outplay potential as well that you can use and you could also fade cyclones and all sorts of stuff like that so it's really important that you master that sort of stuff and i'll pop an example here The third thing is use Symbol of Hope to reduce your teammates' major defensive cooldowns. So Symbol of Hope is a talent and what it does, you basically use it and it channels and it will reduce your teammates' major defensive cooldowns by 30 seconds. For some classes, this is really bad. So like for Hunters, it resets heal, which is not good at all. But for most classes like Warlock, Shaman, um, warrior it resets major defensive cooldowns like parry unending res resolve and astral shift so it's really important that you kind of use these and you don't have to wait until they've stopped using it so say there's a warrior he instantly parries you can press symbol of hope whilst he's in parry and then when he parry finishes his cooldown will be like halved because 30 seconds is taken off so it's really important that you use this and keep an eye out for when your teammates use their defensive cooldowns and I'll pop an example here. So for tip number four, you need to stop using spells such as Power Word, Shield and Renew. And instead you wanna be using Prayer of Mending on cooldown. Prayer of Mending is so important for Holy Priest. Uh, you really wanna be pressing it off cooldown and it's gonna be so much of your healing. Um, especially in those moments where they don't have that much pressure, but they're maybe like 80, 90% health. You really want to be using Prayer of Mending. And honestly, it's going to be like in your top three hills. And it's really important to know that when you use Prayer of Mending, when you use spells like Holy Word uh, Serenity, there's a chance to reset it like there. And you really want to be pressing it on cooldown. And if you reset it, press it as soon as possible. And I use a weak aura that pops up like that um, whenever I have Holy Word. So say if I'm spamming hills and I use uh, Holy Word Serenity and 
it resets my program ending, it will pop up on my screen and then I'll know that I can press it again. There we go, like that. And it's not only just massive healing for prayer of mending. The reason I say don't press renew that much is because there are spells called benediction, which is your prayer of mending has a 12% chance to leave a renew on each target it heals. So you will be getting passive renews out anyway from prayer of mending. And also your tier set is holy word serenity applies 18 seconds of renew to its target and holy word sanctify applies six seconds of renew to allies it heals. So you are gonna be using renew on your targets anyway without even pressing renew. Obviously there are some niche times where you can like renew, say if they're 100% and you just wanna keep renew, you don't wanna use a sanctify or a serenity, um, but you want to keep a renew up anyway just to try and farm some of these procs, your tier set procs, then that's fine too. But really avoid using it instead of prayer bending, you really need to prioritize prayer bending. Okay, and my fifth and final tip, and it's probably the most important actually, is really understanding whether you play stun or in cap. You need to ask yourself, right, does my team, say if you're in solo shuffle, each lobby you need to think, does my team have lots of stuns? Does it need an extra one? And if the answer is no, play in cap, just for the extra CC on the healer. And if it's like a double caster, say if it's double mage, obviously you're gonna to wanna to play stun because they don't have the stuns and that's sort of your win condition there. There are uh, scenarios, say you're playing RMP, obviously you don't really wanna be playing in cap when you have a mage or a hunter on your team because obviously that DRs with polymorph and trap, but you do want to be playing in cap if they, there is a sub rogue, for example. Every time I have a sub rogue on my team, I will always play in cap because obviously they have all the stuns in the world and my stun isn't gonna be needed. So I always play in cap with a sub rogue, even if there is a mage or a hunter on their team. And when you are playing with a mage and a hunter and you're not playing stun, you really want to be using your in-cap fear on the third target. So say your mage gets a nice poly on the healer, then you want to be in-capping fearing the third target because obviously you don't want to be in-capping the healer because it will DR with poly and poly is much better than in-cap. And I'll pop an example here. So that kind of wraps up my video today. Thank you so much for watching if you got this far. Uh, I really appreciate it. And if you like this video and this sort of content, please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe and I will see you in the next one.